on to this meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. I wanna thank everybody who is a council member for their hard work and dedication. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town of Amherst. This meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the town of Amherst YouTube channel very soon. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Julianne and Matt, our capable co-hosts. Have a great meeting, everyone. Thank you, Angela. Um, oh my goodness, and I forgot to pull up the script in advance of this meeting, so let me just pull it up real quick. Um, hello, everybody. Um, oh, sorry, I just remembered. Okay, got it. We got it. All right. <laughs> um, so we're going to call the cultural council meeting to order. I'm going to read the the uh, infamous script that we re read at the beginning of every virtual meeting, um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. Um, via the Zoom link that's been posted, publicly posted on the town's website. Um, uh, no in-person of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort is made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we'll post the meeting um, on the town website, uh, on the YouTube channel, and um, and a recording transcript or other comprehensive recording as soon as possible after the meeting. Which, sorry, I, I butchered that, but that is the um, essence of the of the attorney general's um, position. So now we'll just go around and we'll do a, um, a voice roll call just to make sure everybody's got audio and video. And I'll start with our um, ACC members. So just kind of going across my screen here, um, Robin. We got. We need to know you can hear hear us. Yes. Hello, um, Julianne. Yep. Rachel. I'm here. Cody. I'm here. Eleanor. Yes. And then we have two uh, illustrious guests tonight, which we're very excited, and we will announce them in due course. Um, Sarah. I know you Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Barr. <laughs> Hello. And Gabrielle. Hi, everybody, Gabrielle. Fabulous. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, since we have both of our guests here in uh I'm going to suggest that we move the minutes vote um until the end of the agenda. And actually, Sarah is is first on the agenda, so we'll we will start with you. But I'm gonna suggest we move that until after the discussion with Gabrielle as well, just so we can um take advantage of her time. Um, and so this is this is really exciting to me because Amherst College is such a great partner um, to the town and, and such a cultural icon, um, you know, nationally, internationally. And and so Rachel, uh, our our wonderful member, Rachel, has facilitated an introductory conversation um, with Sarah. And um, I think actually, Rachel, would you like to say a few words before we kind of pass it over to Sarah and she can speak a little bit about her role and sort of potential collaborations that we might move towards in the future? Um, I think I'm actually fine to just let Sarah kind of take the floor because I think, you know, as as um, a cultural council member, I think I just want to try to facilitate these connections and, and bring people to, um, you know, to talk to the group and see what types of collaborations would be desirable and appropriate. So I'm really thrilled to um, you know, have have this meeting gathering and and hopefully it'll lead to other opportunities. And and I think it's great that um everyone is is here to join in the presentation. And um I I just met Sarah a couple of months ago, I want to say, but I think in the short conversation that I had, I thought that it's a really it's really appropriate that she's here to speak with us just generally about what Amherst College um um is in a position to 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 do in relation to um, promoting cultural community and connections with the town. And it's great that Eleanor is here too, to, you know, add another facet to that. So that's where I stand. Thank you. Great. Well, I think that was an, an introduction without being an introduction. So that was fabulous. So, so Sarah, your official title is advisor to the provost on campus initiatives and director of community engagement at Amherst College. Yep. Um, and I think I'll, we'll turn it over to you. So um, 
I've been at Amherst College for 15 years now, which is kind of wild. Um, and I originally was hired to run the public service internship program and used to put uh, students in internships in local um, organizations like the Eric Carl Museum, the Emily Dickinson Museum. Um, and over time, I took on increasing responsibility. And most recently, um, I was asked to strengthen the relationship between the college and the community. So I do things like work with faculty members to find opportunities for community-based learning courses. Um, we work with the prisons and jails in the area. Um, we do site visits. We do projects with places like the, the Holyoke Children's Museum. Um, and I'm always looking for an opportunity to connect uh, the college, the students, the faculty and staff with what's happening in town and beyond. A um, couple things to, to note, um, the, the new president, Michael Elliott, is really interested in the town of Amherst. I don't know if you have heard him talk about it um, or have seen him out in the public, but he cares very deeply about the town of Amherst. And so uh, I think the shift in my work to really build those bridges is um, tied to like his broader hopes for the college and the town. Um, it seems like you know some of the resources that are available. Our colleagues over at the Mead Art Museum are partying right now um, with the opening of the museum, um, but they wanted to be here tonight. I assume that you know the folks over at the Emily Dickinson Museum. Um, the, Bene the Beneski is also a great cultural resource um, and very popular uh, with kids and community. And so my hope tonight was just to introduce myself to say I am you know, your connector on campus and anything you, you want, you need, um, reach out to me and I will help to make those connections. Um, but I'm also super curious about what um, you see are the ways that the college might support your work too. So that's kind of my background and my interest uh, and I'm just curious what would make sense for you all. Oh, great. Um, Christy's joined us, so we'll say hello to Christy and um, just check her audio that she can hear us and be heard. I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you so much, Sarah, just for, for being here. And, and we um, certainly have seen and discussed a little bit, um, uh, you know, uh, like Elliot's focus on the town, and we're really excited for that. And obviously, the, the block party conversation later will certainly have some pretty explicit opportunities there. But um, I think we should just open it up to, to the group and, and if folks have questions or comments about, uh, actually, Sarah, before I do that, do, do you have um, a good understanding of sort of what function the Cultural Council officially plays and, and what we do town-wide? Rachel gave me the backstory when we met. So I was able to, to learn from her and then also to read some more about um, your work on the website. And I also understand, um, I have a friend who was actually going to the Pelham Cultural Council meeting tonight. So you were part of a network of cultural councils in Massachusetts. So your role is definitely tied to place and, and, and the Commonwealth. So it is, it is um, functional in a, in, a, in, in a very particular kind of way. Yeah, good. Okay, good, great. I just wanna make sure you, you know, sometimes folks don't, don't really know what we do. So um, thank you, Rachel, for, for filling her in. So yeah, so do folks have questions or comments for Sarah? Hi, Sarah. So one of the things, you know, there, there's so many ways to collaborate, right? Mm -hmm. And our, our core charter is, is, you know, to serve public benefit by promoting arts and culture. And here we are, it's February, it's pretty mild February, mm -hmm. but as someone who's lived in other places in the country along the way, one of the hardest things for the community to do is is to gather and it's wonderful that the meads open again it's, it's a place that art and culture like it's a go-to place you know that's always going to happen but one of the greatest needs in this community is to facilitate having places for people to gather and i, I wonder um what might be available if not at the mead per se but just <clears throat> amherst college in general because it's I mean, pretty much the town has formed around it, right? It, it's, uh, are there opportunities, you know, for whether it's arts presentations or um, years ago we wanted to do, I don't know if you've heard of Pecha Kucha. Um, oh, I just went to one. There was there just a, a Pecha Kucha event for architectural growth. I had never seen yeah. one before. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. That was something I had uh, wanted to 
to bring and we, we set it up. I was uh, part of the inaugural Pecha Kucha in Knoxville, Tennessee years ago, the first one. And it was just an experience that stayed with me, how much fun it was and how much just cohesion there was within the community, both socially and for, for creative collaboration. And we wanted to do that. Um, and we had it all set up. And then right when everyone was sent home for the pandemic from all the universities, our event was like the day after two days later. So we canceled it. So, but just thinking of that, you know, um, one of the he heaviest lifts there was where are we gonna do this? So right. not that you have to answer now, but, um, it would just be helpful to kind of know if there's availability of space and how that would work if there could be a point person that uh or certain people that we would go to either ourselves or for grantees to be vetted uh to, to have access so that more things can happen in the community so um a couple of things to say about that so so there is certainly space available on campus and i can be a, a point person for the cultural council um, I think there's a difference between doing sort of institutional partnerships, sort of like cultural mm -hmm. council in the college versus individual artists wanting Absolutely. to do display. Um, there is actually um, a good example of this tomorrow night. Um, the Ancestral Bridges exhibit that was in the Amherst Historical Society is coming to Frost Library. And it's a partnership between Ancestral Bridges and um, Frost. And uh, it's pretty exciting because I think it extends the work that Anika and her family were doing in town and is really sort of linking the story of the town and the people who lived in Amherst with the college, um, the folks that, that lived here. So I think that that is actually gonna be a really good example of collaboration between an organization in town and the college. So, so I think there's, um, there are certainly events where people use you know, Buckley for, um, I think the women's club used to do love letters there. Um, but then there are also these partnership activities where the town and the college come together to do something. So, so those, those possibilities are there. So if there are things that you want to do or ideas that come up, please, please be in touch because I can mm -hmm. either get you connected to the folks that are also doing it on campus. So you can do a partnership thing, or if you didn't want to do it um, as a partnership thing and wanted to do it yourselves to find mm -hmm. that space. I would also, um, I used to do orientation trips to the town of Amherst and used a lot of space in town. Um, mm -hmm. And what I have heard from local faith communities is that, you know, they have big event spaces that they would welcome people in as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know parking, accessibility, there's all kinds of things to take into consideration with events. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that people are more open to hosting those and being creative about event spaces as well. That's Great recommendation, and thank you for offering to be a point person that, that's you know really going to to help us. And I would I would in turn ask um, you as far as you know our charter here to to you know serve the public benefit through arts and culture. What do you think's missing? What what do you think Amherst should have and doesn't have? Um, where where could we improve or better better engage or just start dialogue with the community? In the in terms of the town or in terms of like this of students, I'd, I'd say arts and culture as a whole, and then yeah. certainly since it's your role to relate it to to the students, you know, is do do the students feel included in arts and culture? I'm pretty sure Eleanor feels. I was going to say that's so a glad for she's Eleanor here. <laughs> we had before her. We had we were really fortunate to have Cole, and it's it's been just you know, a, a wonderful opportunity for the community to have their voices here. But just just as a general overview, you know, since we have you here, what what's working? Where are the opportunities? So, Eleanor, correct me if I get any of this wrong or if I go off track, but from my perspective, um, the pandemic severed a lot of relationships in the community. And I think this was felt more for Amherst College because students were in the bubble. Um, staff were not on campus. And so I think a lot of the relationships and a lot of the access to arts that people had before the pandemic have been lost. And so I, my, from my perspective, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done to rebuild those connections, to help people feel welcome, and even to know where and how to access art. So, so I... Um, you know, if, if this if this had been a question before the pandemic, I think it would have answered one way. But what I see everywhere is this deep hunger for for activities, for connection, for community, for gatherings, um, and um, and missing the memories of how to do that. 
So I think that the Cultural Council actually plays an important role, which is why I'm so excited about the art event in the spring, because you're creating the conditions for us to remember um, arts and culture and being together in an important way. But I, I but I, I, I've heard from so many students lately that they, you know, really want to be in town and want to be in the community, um, and are looking for help and support to do that. Is that fair, Eleanor? Totally fair. Okay. Um, I yeah, I loved your description of that. I just had a friend uh, come to me. She's taking this class called like sound, soundscapes of the Connecticut mm -hmm. River Valley or it's a something. Really good class. Really good class. I mean, it involves really going out and engaging with the community, like through music and art. And she was asking me, she, like, um, she was like, "Well, what? Like, where do I even start?" Like, she had kind of had no idea or no sense of like what the musical landscape was here. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I just think that class and there are a lot like them kind of what you were talking about, like the community center for community engagement is really interesting to me. Like it just, it does feel like it's starting to be rebuilt. And obviously I wasn't here before COVID. So I doesn't, I don't have a before and after picture. Um, but I love that Michael Elliott's really interested in that. I love that you're really interested in that. Um, and it's so funny. I was just with my friend Cyrus today, who's our mm -hmm. student body president, and he was talking to me about you actually, and then he was ta also talking about um, the Council of Student Town Relations. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't know if that is fits into all of this, but that was a really interesting conversation as well. And the soundscapes presentations that the students make, that class has actually been going on for a decade. And it's documenting the sound landscape of the Connecticut River Valley, and they do public presentations at the end. So it is it is an amazing like cultural resource of our community, and something that really is designed to be welcoming. Um, the last time they did it uh, was before the pandemic in fall of 2019, um, mm -hmm. and one of the student groups did um, a documentary about a local mariachi bands, and they came to campus and performed. So it's it's and these are all public events, and so I think it's like how do we how do we make these things more accessible and available? Totally, yeah. Christy has her hand raised. I just want to say, Sarah, real quick, if you are sharing this stuff on social media, um, please don't hesitate to you know add us or tag us or whatever you know we just got a new social media person named Kara and like literally she is like doing this work right now and trying to amplify like whatever work is happening in town so if you are on the social things I barely know how to use them I will make sure that Kara knows about that that Absolutely. in particular sounds like a great thing that we'd love to share Christy please hi um hi Sarah I'm sorry I came in late um uh I wonder if you know, I, uh, one possible way that um, more connections could be made would be, I don't want to say formal, but more institutionally. And mm -hmm. what I'm thinking about, and I, I just wonder, and I don't know whether this is your brief or somewhere else. And, and the easiest way for me to explain it is to is to talk about um, a set of partnerships that I know about from the institution that I work at, which is a university not in the valley, um, where a lot of, especially in the humanities, students are really eager, I mean, students and parents of students are really eager to make professional links. Like, so, you know, what do you do with an English degree? What do you do with an art history degree? And one of the things that my institution has done is to set up a number of community partnerships so that, the, and in some cases, these are formal internships. In some cases, it's a list of institutions who always are in need of students to connect, you know, for interns, for, um, in this case, we usually give students credit rather than pay. Um, but it's a set of, we call them community partners with the university. And so I wonder whether or not that's something that the Arts Council could, in a sense, ser serve not, you know, not to, but to have a list to kind of keep our eyes open for, for groups or organizations that we could then direct towards Amherst College students or some office. I mean, at my institution, it's called the Office of Experiential Learning. Um, but the other thing, so I just wonder whether or not that's something that as we see institutions that or groups 
you know, that we could say, ah, you know, here's five groups if students are looking for intern internships would be a good connection. The other, so that would be one possibility. Yeah. And the other um, related possibility is that for particular courses like the soundscapes courses or other or other course where students or faculty are trying to develop experiential learning and to actually get students out into the community. I mean, of course it can be done just sort of ad hoc, but in some ways it's like we have the list of all these groups that are looking for funding and we kind of know what's going on. And it's sort of that information, I don't wanna say kind of dies with us, but it, you know, it sort of stays in house unless you're really looking to see where the arts council money goes. It just seems like there's, we have a lot of information and groups mm -hmm. and you have talented students who are looking to develop real world professional connections and things for their CV that is more than file, you know, that's real. Mm -hmm. So is there some way, and maybe, you know, there must be an office at Amherst College that does experiential learning or, you know, some outreach, but how could we do that better? I guess so, is sure. Point. So the Center for Community Engagement, where I, where my home is, is probably the the logical place. And so we partner right. with everyone from the Mead Art Museum to the Sustainability Office, the Career Center, um, and our primary responsibility is is local partnerships. And when I think about the local partnerships, I often talk about it in in terms of like a, a wheel with a hub and spokes. So um, what I always try to do in a, with a partnership is have as many different connections as with the college as possible. So if a faculty member goes on sabbatical or students go home over the summer, it's not that the relationship hinges on one relationship, it's actually like a network of support and connections through the college. So the, the example that I often go back to is the Amherst Survival Center. Um, I was the board president at the Survival Center for a number of years. We've had interns. Um, we're doing a new federal work study program with them. The Spanish department does translation work. Um, we just did a day of service and students sorted foods. It's, it's all kinds of networks. Um, the former head of HR was on the board. Um, and when I, when I think about the kind of connections that we could make with other organizations in the community, it's the same kind of hub and spokes thing. So students have um, different kinds of structural limitations like classes are generally held between 10 and three. And so if you're a nonprofit that's open from nine to five, it's often hard to have a student that would go in and do an internship or volunteering because um, internships don't carry credit, um, which is where classes and project-based work can really be very successful. Um, but there, there's also the kind of technical expertise that exists at the college as well. And so, um, you know, there we have the writing center, we've got the library, like, you know, how do we, how do we connect resources? And so part of it might be, um, you know, I, I realize I'm way over my time and Gabrielle has things to talk about too, but, but maybe it's sort of being in a better um, relationship so that we're in conversation about what's happening with arts and culture in the community and the needs that you're hearing and the resources that you're seeing that might be able to connect with um, the college. So it, so it, um, I, I guess that's sort of my my sense of partnerships, that it should be sustainable, it should be networked, so it's not just one person doing one thing. Um, but and then so it's driven by, yeah, go sorry. ahead. Sorry, I mean, but so would it be useful, I mean, would it be useful to have, you know, a further, in a further conversation, to have a list of five groups that we think you should reach out to sure. that would, I mean, I don't know, I'm just making up a number, but you know, a list of groups that are, you know, that are big, I mean, big enough. I don't know. I'm thinking of, you know, galleries and like not aside right. from me, but like if students are interested in commercial galleries or, sure. you know, like links, because that's stuff we can provide. I mean, we, well, and I would ask your, your organizations if that's what they're looking for. So there is um, a new staff person in the Career Center who is, who is actively looking for local internship sites you know, in, in the town and in the valley. So, so I think that that's where you have the relationship and you can talk with your, your folks um, and think about you know, what are the, the kinds of resources that are needed. I would just say, um, think as creatively as possible. 
So to go back to a survival center example, when um, we moved into the new building 10 years ago, it was a very different facility. I don't know how many of you were there, um, but it required a different mindset and skill set around cleaning and maintenance um, because it was a town owned building and then it was the survival center owned building. And so there was someone um, in the facilities department that worked with the survival center to help them think strategically about the care and maintenance of the building. So just, you know, it's, it's um, as much as I, I think student energy and student connections are great, um, the college is an institution that has all kinds of resources. Um, you know, Olivia is amazing um, and she is my go-to person for K through 12 education, regardless of its arts or not, just because she's so thoughtful. Um, so there's, there's just lots of, of ways to make connections. So the more, the more we know each other and the more I understand what you're doing, the more that we talk about the kinds of things that are happening, I think the more those connections can be made. Yeah, I really appreciate that idea, Christine. I'll just simplify, or my simplified understanding too, is that, you know, we are here mm -hmm. as a, you know, we are here as a resource and we do, we do, when we, when we issue our grant award letters, um, we, we do try to take advantage of that the past couple of years to gather information. Like this year, we've gathered information about the block party. Last year, we gathered information about accessibility. So, you know, there are a couple of times when we really do have direct contact with a lot of artists and folks in the community. And, and so we can do it in a, in a uh, uh, methodical way at that time. But we also just, you know, just because of what we what we do, you know, annually, we, we have kind of a pretty good ear to the ground in terms of the events that are happening, hopefully getting better as we get more in person. So um, I think the more we get, informal, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying, that I think the more we can get people out to cultural council events, the more they're going to have the imagination for what's possible. So I think so that's why I'm like so focused on relationship building and getting people out and about to see what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, go ahead. Go, and Leah, let's just do one more question for Sarah. And then I do want to move over to the to the block party a little bit. OK, I uh, I just got back from work, so I kind of missed the beginning of this conversation. So let me know if this isn't um, exactly relevant. Um, But I am a senior in high school, so I've experienced the relationship between the public schools and Amherst College in taking I um, had the opportunity to take an architecture course for free oh, cool. and so having so I kind of have had the like um taking art classes and then in that architecture class there was a lot of work with the town so I think Amherst College does this really great job in my experience of this partnership with the high school and a lot of my friends are interested in these classes so I think that is something really interesting and I got to do it in the arts I know other people might do it like in the sciences or things but that is, um, I firsthand love that connection. I also um, have talked to some of the people running the Mead Museum outreach at events. I don't know if this was talked about, but um, having connections, I think, between um, when I'm super interested in getting youth involved in arts, like in terms of like kindergarten to sixth grade, getting kids really excited about art really broadens our perspective grant pool later and it's also just great so I think having college students working with mm -hmm. the Mead and being the ones to get children excited about art like that was happening outside I thought that was great and then also um I've been thinking a lot about brainstorming ways to kind of make um, a newsletter or some way to condense all the information about when the dates of our grants are and push it either on social media or paper to um, hopefully have more people come and community involvement. So, yeah. Those are great points, Leah. And um, one thing that we did for the first time this year that I'd like to expand further is um, when we published our list of grant recipients online, um, we also included their dates in, in that single PDF. So it's and, and some of them are ranges, some of them are ongoing, but we we are, and there's a, somewhere down the line, there's a Google calendar coming. Um, we're not quite there yet, but but I, I do think that truly just sort of helping people understand when things are happening is mm -hmm. is really beneficial. Um, and then Rachel, can we, can we go quickly so we can move yep. along to- I have nothing to add to the, to, to all of this. I just um, wanted to thank everybody, but I think the key question I have really for communications, 
um, purposes is we have Sarah's volunteer to be the point person for Amherst College. As far as the cultural council is concerned, do we all just go to Sarah and say, hey, we have this or we have that? Is there some kind of, we don't have to talk about it right now, but I'm just talking about in terms of within the cultural council, in terms of communicating with Amherst College, you know, is there some kind of coordinated effort or should we just, just always CC the co-chairs and if we're happy to, if Sarah's happy to just kind of talk to us, you know, um, as, as ideas come up. So that's just something for, we can talk about later. I'm not, I just want to raise that as internally, how do we um, streamline communications? So that's I think a, it's a good a good idea. And I'm sure Sarah wants to be friends with everybody. I do, I'm a very social person. We should get organized there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, and that's, that's a, it is a good question. I think it'll it's it'll be a case question. by it might be a little bit case by case too. I mean, if we have a a formal council decision that we've decided to proceed, that you know that's one thing. But you know, if somebody wants to reach out and just brainstorm or or whatever, I think that's probably okay too. I'm, I'm guessing. I get I get the sense that that would be okay as well. Um, Absolutely. So and you're going to stick around, right, Sarah? For this, I'm going conversation. to stick around for a little while. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and we're going to try to we usually try to wrap up, you know within 90 minutes. So that that's kind of what, what I have in mind is, is a 730 end time, if not a little sooner, but um, but this is gonna be a fairly rich discussion um, about the block party. Uh, and so I'll give just a couple of really quick remarks and then mostly this will be sort of Gabrielle's show to talk things through over. Um, but just in terms of where, where we stand right now. Um, so in our allocation, we were allowed to use up to 20%. We did, this wasn't a full 20%. It's, uh, but we were we we uh, used about 10, 12%, um, so that we have $7,500 that the ACC has committed to the Spring into Arts Block Party. Um, and Julianne and I have talked, and I've talked to a few people separate, uh, you know, in the side. I, I think the cleanest way to do this is to um, is for ACC funds to go towards production costs. And not artists' costs, which sounds a little backwards, but uh, we did that. We we thought that because rather than sort of, um, we, we were afraid that funding artists would sort of undercut our grant review process. And you know, we have a very sort of scripted, prescribed process for um, distributing funds out to artists. And so, um, you, you know, there there is this idea of maybe having two two like headline bands on the main stage that need to be paid and i think you know because the bid is going to contribute some funds the possible and the cultural district is going to contribute some funds we can keep the acc funds for sort of is that below the line costs um you know which of which there will be you know plenty to cover um and i think that just kind of th that allows us to monetarily support this project without sort of ha you know having the um we just want to avoid any appearance of going outside of our normal process on that. Um, so I guess I, that was that was the biggest thing I wanted to make sure that I sort of shared with folks. Um, and then the rest of the conversation should be probably more more interesting and, and I think just like rich and generative. Um, and so Gabrielle is kind of going to sketch out like what the what the um, event actually looks like. And I did send out a very short document with a, just a little Google map screenshot because it kind of captures how much la landscape we have to to work with. Um, but I think the the biggest, oh, there is something else I want to say. So the biggest question is, you know, just just asking us as a council to think about all the applicants that we reviewed and to consider, you know, ways that these folks could be most um, showcased, utilized, drawn upon to, to make this just a truly awesome block party. And uh, Julianne and I were talking a little bit earlier today, and you know, one thing that I want to make really clear is that we offered every single grantee the opportunity to get involved with this up front. So we made that offer, and that is an, that is not an unconditional offer to everybody who got a grant from us. We will find some kind of a space for you if you want to be showcased at this event, and that was the intention of putting that that survey out there. So I think what we do today is maybe like. You know, it might be it's like, oh, we really need the fire juggler, you know, at, at the Amity Street lot. Or I mean, this is more of kind of we might do a little bit of additional proactive outreach to certain grantees to really, you know, try to see if they're willing to help out. But um, but in terms of, of being fair and sort of um, 
across the board. You know, we did we did make that in our original letters, and I think that's just important to say out loud. You know, in the in the public meeting because I don't want this to turn into something where you know we prefer one grantee over another or things like that. Julian, no, oh, you're muted. I know we invited everyone. I didn't know that we were promising to provide space for fire jugglers, but <laughs> <laughs> very enthusiastic. Um, so, right. I mean, uh, I, I think en enough said on that front out of me, and I probably kind of mangled the whole message, but I, I think folks understand um, what I'm saying. And please, please clarify if not, or ask for clarification if not. Um, but now I'm going to just turn it over to Gabrielle. She's she's been with us before and and has given us updates on this project, and and so now we are uh, moving forward. Thanks, Matt. Um, good evening, everybody. Hi, Sarah Barr. Um, so uh, a small group of us, Matt, Eleanor, Matt, Liz, and myself, um, to sort of get some preliminary, um, you know, sort of boundaries to this concept. I want to start by saying I think that the name is going to go more into the spring into art cultural event, um, and we're going to sort of remove the block party name from it, because although we do want to close off the block from the top of Amity and where North and South Pleasant meet um, between the two banks, if you will, um, and go all the way down to North Prospect Street, which is where um, you see the Stronghouse Museum. Um, block party, I think, for the town of Amherst and our greater community is really about food and the businesses. Um, and we do that in September, and that's very important to us. This um, block area is not as um, food heavy. It's not as many restaurants. Um, we have 47 restaurants downtown. The majority of them are where we usually host the block party, which is between North Pleasant all the way down to Kendrick Park. So we're going to call this more of a, a cultural party or something like that, um, because what we really want to do is on May 7th, which is a Sunday from 12 to 5 p.m. is host a um, event that is about artisans, crafters, performers, and makers, and hope that this brings people downtown to support all of our businesses and restaurants and things, but we're not going to ask all the restaurants to come over to this block because I can tell you right now, that's what it'll be. It'll all be food and we won't have any space for artists and crafters and makers, et cetera. Um, one of the things that we are asking is the town of Amherst also give us the um, entire parking lot um uh that is to the right of the Amherst um uh, Amherst coffee so the Amherst cinema parking lot which is back behind it will remain open for parking which I think we're going to definitely want and need and that Amherst parking lot will become a really great um area for makers creatives and artisans to set up their tables and they can sell and they can, you know, have a market space there. So that's going to be curated by a small group who is going to hopefully some of the people that were awarded cultural council grants and also um, makers in Western Mass. So it's going to be a very local makers market, um, but we're really excited about that. We're also um, looking at the Strong House, which is the Amherst History Museum and their front yard. They're talking amongst their board members about something that they can curate inside, but we have that beautiful front lawn, which may be where the fire juggler goes. Um, right next door to that, we have the Jones Library, who we have, we're, we're reaching out to. We're going to communicate with them about what they might want to do inside the library. But again, we've got that great parking lot outside, and I believe they're going to be putting up the tent again this summer, so that might be something that can host something inside the tent. Um, right up from them, we have the the bank building in the Roberts Block, which is now Kaya International. Um, they have a really beautiful out front patio where we can do um, things with the Mead and the Bineski, um, you know, maybe like uh, Eleanor had reached out like a dinosaur dig um, and then need a hands-on art project for, um, for you know, younger um, artisans and, and future artists, which can be really great. And then, of course, we have the Drake, Drake right next door, which is going to wrap the evening with our five o'clock uh, chamber music series is going to happen at 5 p.m. that day um, to bring that all in and bring it all home, which I think is going to be really nice. We would like to put a large portable stage at the corner of North, where, where sort of the Amity meets North and South Pleasant. And on that stage, we can do um, lots of different things. We can definitely bring in sort of a 
bigger name, fun, funk band, you know, something that'll really drive people. But before and after that band, we can work with, again, artists and creatives that, and performers that have been awarded from you if they would like to come and join us. Um, that stage can be used for dance, it can be used for spoken word, it can be used for uh, music. So, so we have a lot to play with there and a lot to program. We would like to engage um, Amherst Cinema. We would like to engage uh, the Dickinson Museum. We would like to engage the businesses that are directly right there. So Amherst Coffee, GoBerry, um, and uh, Osteria Vespa and see how they want to be part of it. And then in the parking lot that is between Bank of America and the Amherst Coffee, Osteria Vespa, GoBerry, we would like to do a paint by numbers community mural. Um, we have a design that was done by a local uh, artist, uh, Nikki Abelli, who is also part of Amherst Rec. And it will be a really cool way to have people from two years old to 102 years old be part of creating this big, beautiful mural. It'll go on the side of the Oriental Flavor building facing that parking lot. And uh, we can even do a little plaque that says all the names of everybody who made that possible. So we're very excited about all of that. Um, the bid will be putting in funds. And of course, as Matt mentioned, the cultural district uh, received a grant and a portion of that grant will be going into this as well. So willing to open it up to any questions or comments. Robin? I didn't know who was supposed to acknowledge. Uh, well, so how many stages are you looking at and are they gonna have skins, um, you know, covers over them and- are, is This will be a shine only, uh, this is a shine only event. Um, you know, uh, just like every other outdoor event that happens in Amherst, we can really only do it if it's nice out. Um, the stage, I don't know, Robin, if you attended the block party that we did this September, it's, uh, we, yeah. we rent a portable no, so stage from Greenfield and, um, it's, it's absolute, it's a great stage. It's very professional. Um, it has some sun protection, um, and it has full, we'll hire Klondike sound, uh, who we've worked with in the past. That's great. So is there going to be like an MC or someone introducing acts and, if there is, um, are there, oh, is it going to be ASL signed? Is anything going to be a ASL signed? And for the Strong Museum, outside is good, inside is not accessible. Just so you know. Um, I Again, it's what we're doing with the Strong Museum is asking them if they want to engage in this and if they have something that, um, a, if they have a, a display or anything that they want to have open to the public, they can do that. I, I don't know if they're accessible or not. Um, in terms of ASL, I think that that's a great idea and um, we will add that to our list of things to include in this programming. Okay. So do you, what is this uh, fire throw? I mean, it's, it's great, but is that someone who's already been hired or is that just an idea or a concept or and will it be like people on stilts and puppet, puppeteers and storytellers? Um, is that all still being figured out? Is oh, and are so, there separate stages? Yeah, like, is there, so Robin, I was making a joke. Um, hmm. I was making a joke about the fire fire breathers. Okay, that's what I. The, no, the the point is, and I think we can. We just ask Gabrielle to take another second and and, and kind of slow down with it, but. What I, what I was hoping for is that we as a, as a council can look at, you know, the spaces that we currently have in mind and just sort of like, like when I, when I, I sent you got everybody a, um, a, a draft document that included the Kaya front lawn as like a very much identified space and everybody knows what I'm talking about. It's, I hope it's, it's sort of at Amity and Ple Amity and Pleasant. It's the big, used to be a co-working building. Now it says C-A-I-A Kaya. Um, that front lawn slash porch space is is up for grabs. Uh, I mean, you know that that's like a, a true identified space where we can showcase grantees pretty much throughout the five hours. Um, and then in front of the Jones slash potentially inside the Jones is a second space, and I think the strong house front lawn would be a third space. So so really, that table that I sent out before should have 
that um so that's that's three kaya jones and stronghouse and then potentially time on the main stage as well and, and then also the parking lot that is I, you know i don't know who your grantors are i mean i do have a list but i don't know what they do but if you have um a multimedia artist or um, a potter or a painter or something, they can set up a table and display and sell um, what they, they've they made. Right, Matt? Uh, you're talking about the craft vendors Amity lot? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And that's, yeah. that's actually something we really, we really want to message very explicitly to everybody is for folks who are makers and who, you know, who sell their wares, we want to give them a chance to set up a, a tent. Cody, please. Oh, hi, hi, a really cool idea for one of our grantees. Um, one of our grantees. Is older now, power, and I was thinking maybe we reach out, say, hey, you want to do a like a showcase as a way to promote the event, which will have. Two weeks after the walk, poor this oh, I'll be interested to see if we can make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. I think what's exciting about this right now um, is that you sent out a survey and basically when people say, yes, I want to be part of it, we're going to find a way to program that. And if they're promoting something um, that's in the future or that they're doing somewhere else, that this is a great opportunity for free promo to give a taste of who they are and what they're doing. Um, I, I think absolutely. Um, Leah has her hand up, but before, let me just really quickly, and we usually disable the chat for our um, for these webinars. The chat happens to be turned on tonight, which is fine because Julianne is going is keeping an eye on no strangers have appeared. But I'm going to use that opportunity to drop in. These are the five grantees who have expressed interest so far. Um, just because I, some folks probably have their panel book up on the side or a list of grantees on the side. So I just wanna show you this. These are folks who, when they got their award letter, they they literally put into the little survey, yes, I'm definitely interested. You gotta read everything pretty carefully to even catch the survey, I'll be honest. So, you know, it's gonna bear uh, a little bit of repetition to actually get people in, but I just, just for the sake of, of our um, council, these are the five grantees. And then, um, and then Leah had her hand up, but Julian, I don't know if you wanna clarify something first. Sure, Liz Larson joined us. Thanks for coming, Liz. Good to have you. Um, can I? Um, can you? I've like two questions. Could you repeat the date and time because I didn't quite catch that, and I want that in the notes. Sunday, May seventh, and I think Matt. When we met Matt, Liz, and um, Eleanor, and I, we said twelve to five sounds really good. Um, so daytime event. Great, thank you. And then um, do you have a place um, where what kind of volunteer work would be like as cultural members, like we'll probably have like a table, but like I'm also interested in like walking around and what, when you think about this event, what is like help, where do you need help with volunteer um, work and how do we do that? Yeah, so um, having having done the block party that takes over all of North and South Pleasant, volunteers for this are going to be critical. Um, that is something that we'll know more about when we know more about who, what, where they're going to be. Um, but this is going to be a big sort of all hands on deck. Um, you know, we'll bring out all of our tents for the makers if they don't have tents for themselves. Um, we're going to have a lot of 
people bringing tables. Um, load in and load out and clean up for these are huge. You know, we have to leave the area just as we found it. So, you know, we'll all get there early. Um, for the fall block party, we close the street down about two and a half hours before the party, the event starts. Um, we'll be doing the same thing because we need to empty the parking lot, make sure there are no cars in there. So it's, it's a big, intensive, um, fun. It's really fun. Like volunteers have a lot of fun, but we'll know more about where we need volunteers as we get closer. And as we know, you know, what does Valley Flow and Juggle need? Are they teaching? Um, you know, to Robin's question, are we hiring stilt walkers to come in and costume, you know, that type of thing. So a lot of that will be figured out as we do all the programming and put it all together. Yeah. And with the kind of just like initial thoughts about things, I was also going to mention we, I worked on a showcase video, um, like about, I want to say like five to six, like five minute videos that if there's something happening at Amherst Media maybe could be played in between films or something. I don't really know, but that is another thing we could offer and might be interesting to have. Yeah, we definitely need to reach out to the cinema, which we haven't done yet. Um, we wanted to get Got all it. this, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Um, but we want to reach out to the cinema because um, they might, I mean, it depends how they want to get engaged, but I mean, it <laughs> could be like, I was at the high school last night and their performing arts group did a documentary on making last year's musical. And I was like, oh, that should, that would be really cool to have be part of this. I think anything film should be inside because of course we know um, film in the daylight won't work. So I think that there's great opportunity for a lot of that. Again, um, a lot of this is focused on who from your grantees. Um, and I didn't know, Matt, did, did you want to, was this going to go to grantees during the pandemic as well or? Yeah, so let me let let's talk for a second about sort of um, so these five that I put in the chat. You know, they they've explicitly said yes, we're interested. So um, Eleanor is the one who wrote the festivals and projects grant. By the way, um, we should be getting an answer on that this month. I did I did double check with Jay Wang uh, Jay a few weeks ago. It's weird. The, the messaging has been a little bit weird because some have come out, but but ours is not posted yet. Um, so. You know, I mean, I think you got you, some folks who were here a couple of years ago when we did the accessibility, we really did a, a hard push to improve accessibility. And it took a lot of, quote, you know, case management, for lack of a better term, you know, communication, ongoing communication with grantees about, you know, all the various like details that they need to know about. Um, and as as we looked at this, we realized this is going to be a lot of, you know, this there will be a lot of this. Um, and so I, I know that Eleanor and I are already sort of we're invested in terms of, you know, helping to do that, to do some of that communication. Um, and, and I think, so, so I guess I'll, I'll start by saying if anybody else on the council wants to participate in, in that aspect of things, like, you know, sort of reaching out to grantees and, and, and pulling them in, um, we could definitely use one, maybe two more people to just, just help with the case management side of things, the communication you know, we're, we're all volunteers here. So we're doing it, you know, between classes or between jobs or, or whatever. So it's, you know, if, uh, one or two more um, case management type players would, would really help. Um, and you can, you can think about it or you can email later or whatever. Uh, but I, I think really tonight, I would love to, like my, my hope was that we would get a kind of a, an image of what this was going to look like and feel like this spring into arts, you know, block party slash you know, no food block party. Um, uh, and, and then and then genuinely think about our list of grantees. You know, we have 73 grantees. So, you know, besides the five who have already kind of stepped forward and said, you know, yes, we're game. Are there other grantees in our big list that come to mind as, as somebody that um, you think we should really celebrate? And one idea that I had sort of tossed around with Julianne, and I don't know if we landed on it, but we could actually like we could actually all turn our cameras off for, for five minutes and just skim the panel book and just look at our notes and see if anything comes to mind. Um, and I'll follow the will. If folks don't want to do that, we can, we, we don't have to, but it did seem to me like maybe it would just be helpful to take a minute and look through. Be to just sort of, you know, do that and then, and then email it to um, me and Eleanor, you know, after the fact, and, and and we can take your comments that way too. But I felt like there's no time like the present, and you know, time between our meetings sometimes gets gets a little scarce. So 
Uh, I don't know how, how do how do folks feel about about that idea? Eleanor says that's a good idea. Yeah, it's like doing an in class ass assignment. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Okay. In in addition to that. Um, as, as this is a public meeting and Liz Larson from the Amherst Historical Society has joined us, um, I think we should ask um, if there's a way for Liz to communicate with us. Like I said, we don't usually have the chat to, to know if, if Liz well, wanted to. You could, you could promote Liz because she's actually working yeah. with Gabrielle in the, in the yeah. middle. Too, yeah, so, so yeah. I, I, I hope that's okay. And if not, you can hop on here and tell me, tell me it's not. <laughs> so, uh, but before we get into that, uh, maybe, maybe we should hear from, from Liz. Well, oh, but yeah, but she she's working with Gabrielle too, so she's she's. They're like all you guys are all right there together, sitting right across the table. No, but um, <laughs> I, I, Liz is just chiming. So right now, the committee as a as the starter committee, and we want more people to join this working group. Um, are Matt, Eleanor, myself, and Liz just because our two organizations, you know, we're we're trying to get the the. <laughs> the gooey sticky stuff down before mm -hmm. we um mm -hmm. you know join on um so liz i don't think liz would be texting me if she wanted to like shout out anything okay i might have put her on the spot there so we can certainly uh go ahead and uh and turn off our cameras and take that break then hi liz yeah please stay please stay and, and yeah, don't, don't go. <laughs> liz, liz says she's good she's just Great. here for information thank you okay so why don't we us. why don't we just turn off the cameras for five until 706 or 707 and then we'll reconvene this version of the panel book though matt hello oh any version which i mean i would just look at your list of artists which is on the acc website well that's what i'm saying of the approved grants right yes yeah okay not okay
the folks are potentially ready to re-engage, we could do that, or we can give it a couple more minutes if. Um, I, I was actually quite surprised when I just pulled up the list of grantees, I immediately saw two or three that I just thought, yep, 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 you know, and and um, obviously all of our grantees are wonderful. And and truly, if somebody if somebody's putting on a, a concert series and they want to have a booth or a table and pass out pamphlets at this, absolutely, that's a wonderful thing. But certain ones really lend themselves to, you know, to a, to a, a, a block party, so. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm over here struggling because it, it's first just kind of sorting it into who would be more like a performance type thing, right, versus who would, would have um, space to have something more like a table or a booth where they're interacting. And two or three, it's like, it's like everybody, you know, so, you know, I'm, and, and then, you know, they have to want to do it, like, can, can they do kind of a presentation of the fairy festival at you know a small table size thing you know is 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 there enough there that that somebody would think that they could connect with the community and do something inspirational i don't know you know so it is like you said earlier it's a lot of correspondence with people that pitch the idea uh welcome them and and help them brainstorm a bit about this is this is how that could this could work for you and rachel has has her hand up and down <laughs> oh I was just going to say that I feel like strategically, if we're going to be um, following up or kind of um, trying to encourage certain certain of the grantees to participate, I will probably start with the ones to whom we gave full funding, right, or close to it, mm -hmm. because I know we had to scale back a percentage for everybody, but it seems like that layer of people or or applicants who to whom we um, gave full funding or close to it will be the ones. Um, and, and I know that among them, they have very different um, projects. So some of them, for example, if it's the powwow, for example, or other ones that will not yet be ready to be shared or shown. But so in that case, do they just want to put a brochure or some kind of QR code that leads to their um, you know, website for, for more information? That type of thing doesn't have to take up a lot of space, right? They can share a table. And then for the others, if they are um, just as a random example, like off the top of my head, the walking tour that um, it won't be ready yet, I presume, to be launched at all. But if if the people who are doing it, exactly, if they want to kind of just have some kind of information about it happening. I'm just giving I'm just giving an example. Right, you know, right. Of, yeah. Of, um, what can be done. And I don't I'm agnostic about whether or not we do it this way or at all. But that's just my thought on that. I want to hear what Gabriel has to say, but I, I have a comment as well. No, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm the one doing the walking tour as well, so it will be ready. And oh, yes, okay. it would be nice to have maybe some yeah. pamphlets or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I would say that actually, as far as prioritizing people that were given full funding, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I would that I would steer it this way. I, I I think I would still take this from a public benefit point of view. And the amount that we funded was based on a lot of criteria that is either not related to the block party or that the, the or I'm sorry, the arts and culture event. Um, so I, I would I would step back and see it as public benefit. And in some ways, there are some that it's it's really hard that we can't fully fund them, but but this may be able to to give them the opportunity to connect with the community that builds the public benefit they can provide because there's traction. So um I'd 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 be a bit looser with it and really just look for who's a who's a fit and who's inspired and, and excited and can execute. Yeah, sorry, can I just then respond to that to clarify what I was saying. Um, um, it's just that I, I said we could prioritize, strategize those those ones to whom we give um, full, gave full or close to full funding. But I think definitely that I didn't follow up and say that everybody should get still a reminder and an encouragement to, to participate. And I just don't know what kind of time and resources people all have to spend on the communications. <laughs> and just to be fair, you know, we gave a blanket invitation in the uh, letter that we sent out to every every grantee. Um, I, I also don't necessarily feel that I mean, this isn't limited 
exclusively to grantees if we're bringing in other acts and stuff. So, you know, I, I would anticipate interest bubbling up from the community. Yeah, that's such a um, that, that's such a key point. But Robin, go ahead. But I, I just I want to um, say, you know, the, we'll have some funded folks that we will need to outreach to people who are non grantees as well. But but our charge as a council is is the grantees themselves. I'm sorry, Robin, you've been waiting very patiently. Well, I just that's OK. Um, is it going to be more than one stage? And like you mentioned, maybe using the library, that could be, you know, maybe the children's area where there's more participation and storytelling and magic and painting or whatever it is they do. So I am wondering if it's, and is it going to be like a, an area where we could have dancers um, or, and you know, and are we gonna like bring in uh, paid more headliners? to this and is there the money and let's say something. Oh, and the powwow, I think that if they wanted to do not the powwow, but something related to that, it, I think that would be great. Um, you know, and I was just like the, the salsa dance, which also has food, you know, but they might be able to just do salsa dance and people could dance and get instruction. And, um, you know, I'd like to, I don't think the stained glass one can tour because it really isn't ready, but other things might be able to be adjusted. Yeah. Um, oh, can I speak to the stage question? I think, cause you've mentioned that before and I want to, I mean, I think oh, we're I that's with, so. <laughs> well, no, no, it's, it's, it's a, the most important question it is. So we're working out one, like one main stage, which is going to be a true stage. Right. And then I think we have uh, two parking lots, one of which will be craft vendors. The other one, though, could be kind of stageified a little. And mm -hmm. then we have two or three. Uh, Matt, the paint, the paint by numbers goes on in the other one. So that's going to be okay. pretty. OK, yeah. really. So neither one of those is really for performance. Mm -hmm. So really, we, we but we may have like one or two spots on the main stage between the paid acts. That's we, we talked. I mean, kind of the timing is going to be a little bit, you know, fluid, I think. But but we'll have there will be time between the paid acts on the main stage. And then those grassy lawns that like if you had a dance, you know, I mean, if it was a you couldn't do ballet on the grassy lawn, but you could do some kinds of performance. And so I, I want to be careful bring... with dance. Mm -hmm. I just want to be careful with dance because they're going to like depending on what kind of dance the flooring and stability is very yeah. important. So I think dance has to happen on the stage. Um, it won't have a Marley floor. Um, and, you know, so it just, but we can, that, that's something, what's really awesome about this is that we are in the very, very, very baby stages. We literally have a date, a fun, wide open concept. And as things come to us, we can be like, oh, do we need to make a platform stage? Because we could build a platform stage down at the North Prospect, South Prospect, and have a dance stage there. Um, you know, that, that's doable. Um, Klondike uh, Sound has one of those. Um, so I, I don't want to get too caught up in like, you know, I think we've got like an incredible spread of different places to put things, including the entire middle of the street. Um, so if you had some kind of like really cool performer, they could be centered in the middle of the street and we draw, you know, a caution line circle around them and there, there's their stage. Um, <laughs> Um, and Julianne, yes, I, they can, but um, each six foot by 12 foot section of a Marley floor is like a hundred pounds. So yeah, it's, I've, it's I've seen it done before. Wow. Yeah, you know. we, we did it for the block party this year and I went and got the whole Marley stage and put it up on the, um, where um, uh, Miss Saigon is and it's taping and it's, 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 a, it's big. It's, it's a bigger production than um, I, I remember when I was young and like dancing, so. Um, and yes, we will be getting weather insurance, um, Eleanor. Um, absolutely, twenty thousand dollars worth of it. <laughs> but you have to pick the how much rain, right? You haven't. You don't just get it. It's like, oh, um, well, anyway, we can, you can go over that later. We get we get it for the fall party every year, so we're right. we're pretty well versed. Yeah, we have in to that. pick the amount, but um, mm -hmm. so were you talking about? Our seventy five hundred going to cover costs of like stage and sound and 
things like that when you said the kind of the okay well, that's good yeah yep and and i don't think there will be any one item that'll be 7500 but right. there'll, there'll be a number of small ones and you know we talked about different ways to structure and i and um I, I think the easiest thing for us to do is just is just to you know pay it straight out of the the acc account um and that and it's the most you know sort of upfront and transparent so um and then all those contracts will be with the acc mm -hmm. yeah no oh. mm. so oh. um Oh, I was going to say, so, so you mentioned, um, salsa Robin, that was one, of, that was one of the two or three that really jumped to mind for me. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if folks had others that really jumped out to them. Need the, um, African drumming. Yep. Yep. Um, and a couple of them already are in the five that said they were interested. It says yeah, something with the powwow, you know, maybe. The West African dance workshop. Um, if we're doing kids, you know, magic, which are there's a couple of them. We have there. a lot of oh sorry. Yeah. I mean, there's I mean, they're just ideas. It's kind of how we want to do it. And if we have these okay. other places, the grassy knolls and the library, it can expand and have more, but it's um kind of like paint this broader palette and then you figure out you know which colors you can use and which ones you don't and then putting on my downtown amherst foundation hat um which we received a grant from you to make um all of our high school programming that we're doing uh, gratis um you know it, it would be fun to see if we have gaps we could go to the high school performing arts department um, you know, so we've had two cabaret nights. We're going to, by the end of the year, have four different jazz nights. Um, we're hosting an, a, a fundraising event for the um, uh, uh, orchestra um, ensemble to get better instruments tomorrow night at the Drake. So those are all things that we could bring as well um, that could be great um, throughout the event. So that would, folk, like, that would bring the Drake and the Downtown Amherst Foundation grant from you to life. Yeah, I would also add on as a high school student, we do, we put on this like, um, this play festival at the high school. I don't know if you're familiar with like briefs or student writtens, which are five to 10 minute plays. Briefs is in the fall um, and they're picked, but student writtens is in the spring, probably very close in line with this event. And it's student written like five to 10 minute plays with like minimal sets, costumes could be bring, which would be, I think a really cool way to bring in performing arts department. We also have um, dance ensembles. Um, we have a drumming ensemble, which I think would be really cool to involve. And then I was also gonna say, adding on to what Robin was talking about, um, we have a lot of um, arts education kinds of things like, I or interactive, there was some, um, fabric arts, um, dyeing scarves, like the Monarch Butterfly Project, and a lot of, I could see these being vendor tables where people get involved in creating, and it wouldn't be the full scale of the project, but I think it would be interesting to um, have some of those education-based events at the spring thing. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. And, you know, we have, I mean, obviously we have a liaison to the schools because we did give the grant, you know, through the bid to the schools. Um, but I think certainly we can, we can go be above and beyond that. Um, yeah. Is the, is the Drake going to be a stage for the whole festival or are you thinking that's just for the closers? No, um, the Drake has, uh, programming that evening at 5 p.m. the Chamber concert series. They'll be doing load in and sound checks earlier that day. Um, so the Drake is off the calendar, like it's not part of the block party, as it were. Oh God! Um, the stage that we bring in will be will you know um, be part of that. Um, and so the council awarded the Downtown Amherst Foundation through the Drake um, fund. So like we could invite 
the funds that that made possible uh, with the high school performers to come to the main stage at the party, but not on the Drake stage. For sure. And are the, are the concerts kind of, is that, do, are you expecting like people at the um, spring event are going funneled to those concerts or is that completely different? Um, it's completely different, but what a nice way to wrap them, things up with a chamber music concert. Um, it is a ticketed event, so it, you know, I, I don't want to make it part of this because I think it's very important that everything at this event be free, um, but it, it, it'll be happening. Got it. Thank you so much. I know we covered this earlier and I didn't write it down and numbers fly in and out of my head, but the date I have it in our letters is May 19th and that's a Friday. Yes, um, th that again, that was like spitballed at some point, but it really needs to be on a Sunday or we can't get parking. We can't get the parking lot. So we don't um, Bank really of America. have a date right this minute. Yeah, May 7th. Thank you. That's what I, was, I didn't yep. write it down. So actually, yep. what this the segue with that, Matt, is that because we sent out every single letter wrong. <laughs> yeah, tentative. It's said tentative. It's not. That's fine. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's um, it's it's actually yeah. great. It's it's an opportunity because now oh, we have to correct that. ourselves. So yep. um, we can we can craft some sort of a a message, and and take that to the community and maybe be suggestive of hey a little bit more of a call to action that if you're a performer you know that, that does this kind of stuff or if you would would your uh would you be able to present your your um art or or fiber and fabric making and weaving at a table type thing so i think we could um this is great to like really kind of streamline some of this outreach prompt them again with the new date and kind of pitch different concepts and then see if any of them are going, oh, that's me, I could do that. But I think it would really lighten the load as far as um, having to, to email everyone that we're thinking of. And, and we get to invite and them. Julie, right it's an excuse. Julianne, also, um, like that weaver or textile, they could do um, like a hands-on, like people could weave with them or like learn. Yeah. They could yeah. do a demonstration or they could literally just sell. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah, they could just yeah. be like, yeah, I just want to have, like, I want to have all my stuff and I want to sell all this stuff. Um, yeah. The maker's market that we did at the Drake in December, um, mm -hmm. all 13 makers said it was the, the highest grossing night they've had um, this year, you know? Yeah. So there's clearly an appetite to support artists yep. and makers and creatives. So I think that that's really exciting. And if somebody were to come to us, who's not a grantee and, you know, who, is is a maker in the community and they say i want to be there i want a table what what are we doing for them do they does anybody have to pay for that or how does that work yeah we're liz um has a small group of people that she'll be working with she'll be the one working on the maker side of this so anybody who has a cultural council grant who wants to be part of it is in um and then anybody who wants to do we're looking we're trying to look at a sliding scale um, okay. and, and figure that out. We don't have the answer right now, but it's, um, we'll put out a call to artisans, crafters, and makers for that. Great. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. I, I think this is a huge help that we need to reach people again. So, and, and there are lots of You're good right. ways for people to participate and we can sketch those out. So yeah, I, think have, I, at, I think, oh, go ahead, Rob, sorry, Robin. Are please. we looking at only 2023 20, grantees? What if someone from 22 or 21 who we granted but didn't apply in 23 wants to participate maybe what we should do is is also at some point do a social media post just in general and we'll have to think carefully how to craft that as far as it yeah to to go back to prior grant years you know um i'd, I'd have to 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 get that list in a different way well i don't mean necessarily reaching out to them but if they see this and say oh well, oh in the interest of everybody was shut down for for covid you know we we want people to participate whether they're whether they're grantees or not this year prior years you know if, if it brings community benefit we want this and a good good time right and and um, yeah i think that. i mean i think the way we have to do it is is be open to any 2023 grantee you, you know, i think they're, they're the they're the priority um, and then beyond that, we can, you know, it, it might be a little bit of a, 
I hate to say the time, you know, time sensitive thing, like, you know, as, as people come to us, we can find sp spots for them. And, and we do have a lot of creativity and flexibility, but I think at some point we, you know, we will run out of space, hopefully, you know, hopefully, I mean, hopefully this thing yeah. is rich and teeming with great artists and not, you know, that's, I think that, that would be a problem. problem we'd like to have if we have too many. Have yeah, I think I, 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 Matt, to that point, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now from experience in just a little bit of this that we've done, um, the reason why we're going to have a pay scale is because um, it's un, it, it's so exciting and incredible how many artists, performers, et cetera, are in the Valley. I mean, it's huge. So it's going to be Amherst centered first, um, you know, and then we'll kind of trickle out from there, but it's not going to be hard to fill this and to pack it full of really incredible talent. Yeah, it's great. It's exciting. Yeah. So looking at the clock, if, if folks think about this and have other thoughts, um, just shoot them over to me and Eleanor and we will bring them to Gabrielle and Liz. And and then we are going to, you know, we're looking for one or two other people to help with um, case management. Lee, I, I know you're interested and that's awesome. And and you also helped us with the accessibility. So I, you know, you kind of know what what goes into the back and forth. It it, it it takes a lot, but it's worth it. But it does take a lot to sort of you know help answer all, all the questions that folks have. Um, and I, oh, I should one last thing I I didn't mention earlier that I just want to make sure everybody knew is that the Mead um, has has really explicitly said you know yes we're in and we want to we want to have a place there as has Vineski. Um and I've been, <laughs> Vineski, It sounds Eleanor, correct me like archaeological dig is that the direction they're thinking yes yeah i had thrown that in there and it was they really liked that i think um so that's i think what we're thinking of kind of like a sandbox kind of mock archaeological dig um but i think their availability does depend a little bit on student of like their their students who work there and like their availability around that um the only i think i haven't still haven't heard back from the dickinson so if anyone has another contact or something, I can like look at who I sent an email to, but or if anyone knows someone there who would be good to talk to, let We're me gonna know. We're going to reach out to the Eric Carl and the Yiddish Book Center and Hampshire College and UMass as well. I'm not sure when, who, or where, but you know. And Eleanor, I can actually help you with all of that. Thank you, Sarah. So I, I I just, I do want to throw out that cultural district is important as well because the cultural district's putting a lot of money in, the, you know, a, a good sizable mm -hmm. amount. So um, we'd like to wait for Carl, Yiddish, Hampshire um, to see what we have from the cultural district and the cultural council before we expand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. The geographic boundaries, if folks don't know, of the district only includes now in spirit i think we you know it's it's bigger than that but but the reality is that there is a map and i've seen the map and it, it doesn't go uh all the way north and south so and while um, it sounds like we have a ton of space um it's incredible how quickly and especially if there's you know i mean the fall block party 7200 people came to that wow so you know this is the first year this is our first annual but I think we have to be, you know, we, we want to, you know, we've got to have a lot of pedestrian space and we have to have space for people to breathe and move and feel safe. It's also our first, this is the first annual, you know, so I think um, our focus just needs to be on, yeah, on, on having something that people enjoy and that they look forward to next year. And, you know, that kind of always leaving, always leave them wanting more concept, you know, somehow that might apply to our planning here as well. Um, that's I, a great point yeah, about it being annual. Ask, yeah. I, right, so speaking of always leaving wanting more, <laughs> so, <laughs> since we're at seven thirty, um, if it, like, the the minutes, um, the in in Gabrielle and Sarah, I, I don't know if there's any other urgent items that you all wanted to um, come to. I I did want to get our. It's just important that we get our minutes posted for the deliberation meetings, because it's such a big part of our. Um, a process, you know. Um, so, but Gabrielle, please, please. Can, can can I go? Oh yeah, <laughs> you may be excused. Yes. <laughs> thank, right. you. Oh, thank you. So thank you. Thank you, Gabrielle. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, so, does 
I, I did send them out. There's a kind of late this afternoon, but I did send out draft minutes of the um, deliberation meetings. Uh, does it? Does anybody have comments on those or want to make a motion to post them? Question. My comment is I'm good. They look fine. Is that, is that a motion? I'll make a motion to post or approve. Seconded. Okay, I'll do a roll call. Uh, Robin? Yes, whatever. Thank Julianne? Yes. Cody? So, Cody, you're muted. Yes. yes. Rachel? I made the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was I okay. and Christy. Yes. Wait. So then I, I think I missed somebody on the vote. Then Leia. Leia. Yeah, I wrote them to do. Do I still vote to approve? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for doing that. I just want to make sure that was taken care of. Um, the other, I did, I did add to the agenda late um, a grants update because Julianne, we. So, so folks may remember that um, MCC knew this year, I think because there were so many COVID uh, amendment requests that were date changes, venue change. I mean, there were just so many tweaks. Um, MCC for this year's grants allows us to approve date changes and amendment changes with just two members as opposed to a quorum. Um, but we do need to update what changes we approved and then those need to go into the minutes for public posting um and leah we can we can email you those so you get the whatever details correct but julian i don't have them in front of me and i think there's only one or two i'm sorry i'm sorry I, there's only one <laughs> or two and they're, and they're both just date changes i believe yeah okay so um i i think i do have them and i'm sorry that i have some background noise here but um let me let me see if i can run through them so one one that we had was a date change for i believe ghost ensemble um which is was the grant title was re we're talking 2023 matt right before i'm off to the races here yep, yep, yep. okay yeah this was uh it, it's the rewild um experimental ensemble music this was scheduled for december 16th and it was canceled because of inclement weather and it is now rescheduled for april 16th um let me see if i can find the other one um wait do i have to write down the original date and the rescheduling well, we can um, if, if you like it again it was december 16th 2022 originally and now it is April 16th, Wait, December 16th. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then let me just uh, pop over into the email and I might be able to find the other one. Um, what? So modification requests. I only have this one. Um, let me make sure. No, no, I'm incorrect. There's another one where paperback magazine um asked to change theirs um and they are now ha having their event at the augusta savage gallery uh and that will be um on february 15th as far as the original date um just a second um Yeah, I my numbers. Um, the original, oh, okay. The original date was March 25th and now it's February 15th, so sooner. And is the venue a change too? It, yeah, it did. It did. But I, I believe it's still at UMass. It, it was just a, a different UMass location, okay? So pretty, pretty minor changes here. And, um, Otherwise, with the, the the grant updates, you know the the other information is just that we have about fifty percent of the contracts are in. We sent them out 
January 15th. So pretty much within this week, the other half are due back in. And um, the, the town received the money, um, half of the signed 2023 contracts and all the paperwork are with uh, are submitted to the town. And uh, we're, we're in good shape processing 2023. Um, we were pretty firm in our letter this time that people needed to to uh, take care of this within four weeks. So we'll know better by, uh, by this time next week if they took that seriously. Um, and a quick 2022 update. Um, to the best of my knowledge, we have uh, final grant reports for all but 10 that we should have them for. And we're, we've contacted everyone. So that was a big question with the direct granting was, will people have their events? Will they do the reporting? Will they provide you know, the proper documentation? Um, if we give them the money ahead of time. And at, at this point, I'd say that, um, I don't know where that, that puts us at, at, you know, over 80% are all to the good so far. So that, that to me is great news on the direct granting model. Um, one, one la very last thing, and then I think we should adjourn, but I, I wanted to, I, I am not sure that we discussed as a council that, that Toby resigned. Um, but Toby yeah. had a personal matter, uh, death in the family, his, his father passed away, um, early and he, he resigned before our deliberation cycle. And I know I've talked to some folks individually about it, but I did want to make, make everybody aware that he didn't just sort of ghost. He did officially mm -hmm. um, resign just due to, due to personal circumstances. Um, so Julianne and I, we, we talked to Angela about trying to get somebody on and onboarded in time for the deliberation cycle. And it just didn't, it, it, you know, it, it just didn't make sense to try to get somebody up to speed on everything when we were already going. So we are gonna go back to her um, shortly to start working on another candidate for, and I should have, of course I should have shared this when Sarah was here because, you know, um, obviously we've had great luck with the Amherst College students so far and, and um, would love to have more. Um, but so if, if folks have anybody in mind that you, that you think would be, potentially a good candidate, or if you want to put something out on your social media or otherwise, um, there is a, uh, a community, a CAF, Community Activity Form on the town website. If you just Google Amherst, Amherst Mass CAF, it'll come right up and it's a very short for, form and that that puts the individual's name into the, um, into the hopper so that the town staff are, are aware of it. Obviously they can just email us or or Angela or literally anybody on this on this commit council can help with that. Um, Plus, this is my last few months. So that's right. And, and so you will be needing a that opening will also. And Robin is going into an unbelievable field. sixth sixth year of, of amazing service, and so there will be two slots. You know, we'll, right. we'll have at least two slots to to fill. So. Um, we're, we're not going to we're not in any rush to do this. It's really, it's really most imperative when we're getting closer to the deliberation meetings. Um, but you know, that, that it all takes time just to get the, the interview scheduled and all that. So, and just if, if anyone's thinking of, if anyone's thinking they'd like to be treasurer going forward, <laughs> since we're losing Robin, it, it, she's really whipped it into shape. It's simplified. It's, it's really become, um, you know, a, a, a much lighter task and Robin's really, you know, gone to the mat for us as far as switching from uh, the uh, reimbursement model to the direct grants with all of the modifications that happened with COVID and it made uh, this very complicated, but it's really getting to be a well-oiled machine now that's very streamlined. And thank yeah. you, Robin. And without the, <laughs> without the reimbursements also coming in, it should be um, a lot easier. Yeah, we're just vetting everything up up front, which and and putting it out, you know, within basically a, a one month period or or, or less, and then it, it's just much better. So, just something to keep in mind if anyone is 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 looking to uh, serve even <laughs> a little bit more. You get to really know what the grants are and what's you know going on and all of that much more than I did before. So, and. Uh, yeah, so that part of it is good. Yeah. Okay, um, 
Cody, I see, I see you said I, I can help on the um, chat. Did you mean with case managing grantees, that, that side of things? That That is one, Cody. Yeah, right. Okay. That was, yeah. I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll, 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 I'll put your name down. Okay, everybody. Well, the... thank... Oh, Rachel, please go ahead. Yeah, I have two um, logistics questions. Um, one is, do we have a day? for the next meeting. The other one is with regard to recruiting new council members. What is kind of the um, time frame? So for example, if we have, we want to like recommend people to apply, um, do you and Julianne foresee each, like maybe trying to fill Toby's uh, vacancy in the coming two to three months? Or is it just whenever someone, because if people are going to be sending applications, at what point are you hoping to review a whole bunch? I guess that's, if you have an idea about that at this point. Just the sooner the better, I think, for them to put it in. But in reality, you know, we'll probably try to we'll work with you know. It, really, this is the the town, town manager's responsibility, and we don't we don't vet things that we you know they're, they're the ones who kind of bring us the interviews. Um, and so I I would anticipate we'll try to fill you know both Toby and Robin's sl slot at the same time rather than because it's you know I mean she schedules everything sort of at once um so I, I wouldn't anticipate bringing new folks on until honestly august or september you, you know late summer um so so folks have time to think about it and stuff but you know it's a, it's a quick form to fill out so i would say you know i wouldn't tell for i would i would just say that as soon as you know if, if they think they might even if they're even if they're not sure if they're interested filling that out then you learn a lot more through the process and we had a few people you know we've had people who we've interviewed who then said you know this sounds great but we're not interested due to the time commitment or or some other reason you know i would add that as soon as possible is is key and that actually you know getting through the interview process and as we get into the summer and everybody's out on vacation um it can be kind of hit or miss um with, with the town so while I don't think someone would actually come in and start their service until around then, we do want to get the process rolling. We do want to, we're already in touch with Angela as far as we need to do this. And if we told people eh, around June, send in your application, there's no way that we'd be likely to bring them in uh, by, by uh, August or even quite like, you know, in time for deliberation, it'd be really tough. That's, we're we're actually point. very lucky to get Eleanor and keep her. So thank you for being here. <laughs> very yes. What was your other? Uh, oh, uh, what, over, we've been doing. We've been trying to do second Tuesdays, um, but we'll, we'll we'll resolve it through email. We'll, we'll get the date. Second Wednesdays. It's Wednesday. I thought we were trying to do second Tuesdays, and then today was an anomaly. Oh, Am I crazy? <laughs> There's always an exception. <laughs> so we're talking about next month, right? Yes. Okay, because I had down, oh no, that's a different thing. Okay, no, I did. I have down like Valentine's Day, which seems very strange. So mm. we could potentially do the eighth, but again, I think we can work that out by email. Yeah. Um, what was the public comment that was on the, um, the, Agenda. um, yeah. So but that, that just, that's something that we've been advised we need to keep on there. In case there is a member of the public who wishes to make oh it. got it but it wasn't an existing comment that we needed to talk about no no and oh, liz, it, liz who was in the audience was actually a member of the meeting i mean she's just part of gabrielle's team i think she's doing some work for for the downtown foundation and i can also add on that i can um maybe talk to teachers and spread the word trying to get um hopefully three new um student members going again I was that, that's yeah. fabulous. Yes, a hundred percent. I I mean I, I think we 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 lost something when we didn't have all three. You know that was a really fun part of the process. But we did Thank gain. You're leaving us, right? <laughs> What's that, Robin? We are you definitely leaving us? I don't. Well, I don't know where I'm going to college, so I think it depends. But okay. I don't know if it's. I don't even know if I would be allowed to stay. I would want to, but. I wouldn't want to take it from someone who's like living in Amherst and wants to be involved in that. My thinking is that you can use your permanent address at your parents' house, but That's you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to go outside the lines to make sure that we can keep you as long as you're willing to help. Yes. Me. I hate to lose you. Um, I thought, anyway, I, I thought you told us you declared early acceptance somewhere. 
No, I was applying, but um, I got waitlisted. So I'm now, I applied wide and now I'm just like waiting until spring. But, you know, it's a gambling game. And I feel like um, <laughs> it actually, as I was going through the process, there's so many people that are trying to explain. They're like, it's this group of people and they're trying to make it. And I was like, oh, I totally know like what that is. So I think <laughs> having the experience of reviewing things has made um the process of applying for things easier oh that's so that's that is such an interesting comment yeah yeah, uh, yeah these are committees are wonderful but they're not always the most efficient way to do yeah kind of like how we're like oh like we have too many music grants and it's not personal <laughs> but we can't fund as many music grants all the time and that's basically what college admissions is and it's not personal but it's just you know that's, yeah you have that's, to fit that's hilarious category <laughs> Yes. yes. All right, okay. all right, everybody. I think we're going to adjourn. Um, Motion to adjourn, right all that, or just are we off? Here? Uh, yeah, we're good. Camera. Okay. Thanks all. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone. Leah, did you get?